Hello Year 4, we are continuing with Chapter 7 Part 2 of Secrets of a Sun King and this part is called Lysandra. Now if you remember, our character Lily has found the letter, uh, the last bit of uh, the letter sent by Lysandra and here is the final bit, okay? <clears throat> Lysandra. The feast days dawns with a clear blue sky. Kai Kai has chosen his favourite horses for the chariot race. Lion, a young chestnut, a myrrh, with black coat ripples like water. Sensing excitement in the air, they refuse to keep still as I, uh, as I plaited their tails. Rotty, the stable boy, admired my handiwork. I bet my finest blankets on those horses, Winnie. Most of the wagers are on the king himself, Rotty tells me. In the palace courtyard, under the fig trees, crowds are gathering to place their bets. A medicine woman is offering to pull out bad teeth for free. There are bottles of sandalwood, heel shoes, puppies, a, so a song to charm snakes. The queen has her finest earrings, so loaded with rubies they make her wearer's earlobes stretch. The sun is shining, the air is warm, Amun is smiling down on us again. It is a day for being happy, I tell myself, yet it does, uh, it, yet it does little to calm my nerves. The race day is scheduled for mid-afternoon. A crowd, uh, a crowd lines the route which runs from the palace through the marketplace down to the river before looping back to the temple with its newly built ram-headed sphinx. It turns into a hot day. Mother and I are wearing white tunics and uh, coal hill under our eyes to beat the glare. We take our spot outside the palace gates where the race will start and end. My own... Uh, Maya could win, Mother said proudly, but under her breath. The king always wins, I reminded her. When the two chariots appear, it's not hard to see why. Maya looks almost too big for his vehicle, all arms and legs. He's struggling to keep his balance. His, horse, his horses, Bess and Beetle, have uh, grazed too much winter grass on the riverbanks and are plump next to Kai Kai's pair. Kai Kai, in contrast, is regal. He too has collar painted uh, thickly under his eyelids. He's wearing a gold headdress and a breastplate bright with jewels. His horses, I think smugly, are exquisite. They're snorting and shaking their manes, pouring the dust. In this rare moment, when he looked truly like a pharaoh, Kai Kai was the obvious winner. On the palace steps, uh, Horn fed, the, ar uh, the army general starts the race. Behind him seated is I. Kai Kai glances at his godfather, raises his hand. Wish me luck, that little wave says. I nods, then looks away. It makes me sad for Kai Kai, whose devotion to his godfather is never quite returned. All eyes are on uh, Hormid now as he holds aloft a bronze gong. Excitement shimmers through the crowd. As he thumps the instrument, it booms. There's a fraction of a moment where Kai Kai nor Maya move. Then the creak of wood, rain snapping against horses' necks, and the dust everywhere as the char chariots surge forward. A terrific roar goes up from the crowd. Mother grips my arm, I grip hers. We stand locked together. As the dust clears, we see the back of Kai Kai's chariot speeding down the street. Despite the bumps and the holes, he goes steady. Maya is some way behind. He's shouting at his horses, at Kai Kai to slow down. The crowd laughs. They're loving it. When the chariots are out of sight, the crowd, the crowd goes after them. A great wave of people jostling, necks cranning, blood guzzling. Keep up, mother! I hold out my hand to her. She laughs as she stumbles, then catches hold of me again. In the market uh, marketplace, the stalls have been pushed aside. The road is wide, dipping gently down to the river. Up ahead, blocking the route, is a heap of rubble. Not so long ago, it was a statue to the old god At Aten. Now, it's a hazard. Kai Kai throws all his weight to one side. The chariot swerves just in time to avoid it. Maya, lum lum lumbering behind, does the same move. His weight is greater. I cried out at his char as his chariot tips. One wheel leaves the ground, then magically, it is rightened again. I think I've squeezed all the blood from my mother's hand. By the time the chariots reached the river, we lost sight of them. Mother and I, and most of the crowd, walk back to the palace, where the race will finish. Every now and then we hear a distant cheer and groan. 
It's frustrating not to see what's happening. At first, people are impatient, standing on tiptoes, but as time passes, the crowd settles again. In the middle of the street, doves pecked at the dirt. A hungry dog, who is watching them, lays, lays down and goes to sleep. I start to worry. It can't take this long to gallop around town. Something must have gone wrong. I go over Kai Kai's dream. Something, um, go over Kai Kai's dream. The darkness, the wild animals, and feel the same coldness in my veins. Mother nudges me. Look. Over the palace steps, Hormtham is uh, pointing in the direction of the temple. They return, he bellows. Everyone stand back. Eager to catch the first sight of them, we press up against the side of the road. I can hear uh, hoofbeats now. I'm excited again, on tiptoe, straining to see. In the distance, I hear rumbling chariot wheels. There is dust in the air coming towards us, like a sandstorm. Shouts. The smell of sweating horses. The doves fly up in panic. The dog awakes and sulks off into the crowd. The road is empty. Then it isn't. It's Maya I see first. He's crouched forward, almost touching a Bess and Beetle's rump. Kai Kai isn't far behind. Soon he's level with Maya again. By the time they reach us, they are full gallop. All I see is a blur of speed. Brown horses, brown chariots, brown dust. The, the finish line is uh, just ahead. Up on the palace steps, Formhead gets ready to bang his gong. The dust clears enough to see Kai Kai's edge ahead. Maya's horses are tiring. He makes a slow, a sl a show of urging on them. But the race is over. The king's going to win. We all laugh with delight. There's cheering and clapping. Then comes an almighty crash. The sound of splintering wood. A stunned silence because we all know this isn't meant to happen. People start screaming. The whole crowd pushes and heaves in a different direction. Is someone hurt? Mother cries. I'm almost too terrified to look. There's a chariot on its side in the road. Two horses are struggling to get up. I realise they're not Bess and Beetle. I sobbed with relief. But it's not Maya. Then it must be Kai Kai. No, Lysandra, stay back, mother pleads. I squirm free of her grasp, reaching the broken chariot, just as Mai Mai does. Kai, Kai Kai has been thrown from the vehicle. He lies some distance away, face down in the dust. People are crowding around him now, unsure what to do or whether to move him. No order, no order comes from the palace steps. I hasn't got up from his seat. Thornhead at his shoulders, talking angrily to him. It's Maya who gives the orders. Take him inside, he says to the strongest looking people in the crowd. Be careful of his head and leg. As Kai Kai is lifted, the injuries are clear. His leg is at an odd angle. There's a gash on his head, but his eyes are open. He's alive. Sinking to my knees to thank the gods, I see that the chariot wheel lying in the dirt. I wonder why no one else had noticed it. The two sp spokes are broken. The whole thing is buckled beyond repair. I was there this morning when Rotti checked everything, then checked it all again. He wouldn't have missed damage like that. He wouldn't have put the king's life at risk. No, he wouldn't, I think. My gaze resting on the palace steps. But there are those who would. If the pharaoh dies, I is next living a male heir. This, I think bitterly, means Kai Kai is worth more to his ambitious grandfather, dead than alive. The healing ladies spent the next day tending to Kai Kai. From our horse, we see pots and baskets carried in. Fresh incense, linen, herbs and potions. The more I think about how the right wheel was sheared off, the more certain I am it was deliberate. I, keen to place blame, has already found his target. Poor Rotty was dragged from the stables last night and beaten with his own horse whip. Maya brings us news as we're closing the shutters against the midday sun. He confirms my thoughts. Kai Kai's head, head wound is deep, to the bone. They're, they're bound up his leg in case it's fractured. He's very lucky he could have been killed. Maya's one of the few allowed at Kai Kai's bed. It's not nearly as much fun as hurling pomegranates or her hunting ostriches, but he shows equal devotion to it. He's blessed to have a fr such a friend, I said. He's asking for you, Lysandra. Mum stares. I'm suddenly chilled. I'm certain he wants to talk more about his dream. Kai Kai's bedchamber is the coolest part of the palace. It catches the breeze from the river, and facing northeast, it gets only the earliest rays of sun. Kai Kai is awake. His eyes are uh, night dark from the medicine he's taken, though I'm not sure if it's helping much. 
he's fidget, fidgety and irritable. Leave us, he tells the healing ladies who crouch at the edge of the room. Kai Kai doesn't speak again until he's sure he's alone, and even then he lowers his voice. I wonder who he thinks might be out there, eavesdropping. It's not hard to guess. Lysandra, the conversation we had about my dream, Kai Kai said. You haven't told anyone, have you? Just Maya, I replied, who probably knew about it before I did. Good. I don't want people to think me weak. Weak? I'm startled. So is Maya when I catch his eye. There is no there is no taint in dream reading. It's a tradition as old as the hills. Kai Kai interrupts. A window into the afterlife, yes. I know what it means, but everyone assumes I'm dying. You told me the door in your dream was closed, I reminded him. You're not ready for that journey yet. Ah, but I came close to it yesterday, didn't I? There are parts of this dream that concern me, yes. He is in danger of something or someone. Perhaps yesterday wasn't an accident after all, I confessed. Kai Kai frowns. The stable boy was slack, was, was slack in his work, so I hear. It wasn't his fault, I argued. He checked your chariot before the race and there was nothing wrong. Someone else must have tampered with it. I glanced at Maya, hoping he'll agree. But he's pacing the room, as alert as a snake. He stopped in front of the windows and gestured to us to be quiet. I hold my breath as he listens at the shutters, then flings them open in one swift movement. We all hear the patter of feet as whoever was out there listening runs away. Kai Kai's right, Maya says. No more talk of dreams. <clears throat> we, don't, uh, we don't talk of the accident again either. By the time the moon's waned, Kai Kai's hobbling around the palace as if nothing happened. He's cut himself a new walking stick uh, to mark the decision, uh, mark the occasion. Word is also trying to show more interest in the running of the kingdom. I wonder what I and Thornhead make of this change. One night in the orange glow of Mama's cooking fire, Maya t takes me aside to tell me the new arrangement isn't going well. They don't listen to him, he confesses. All the decisions from uh, still come from I or Thornhead. Uh, when they can't agree, they bribe Kai Kai for his support. But you're there at those meetings, can't you speak up for him? I asked. I won't be there anymore. From tomorrow, I've been ordered out into the desert to find a site for Kai Kai's tomb. This worries me. Is he sick again? Maya shakes his head. He's healing well, but I say we should have started work on it years ago. It takes time and sweat to build a tomb fit for a pharaoh. This is true. Kai Kai's mother, father and beloved grandmother all have lavish golden chambers hewed from, desert, hewed from the desert floor. Their journey onwards to the afterlife will have been comfortable, easy. Maya's right to want the same luxury for Kai Kai. Yet I can't shake off the fact that I is behind this. The wayward chariot will, ear pressed to the window shutters, the building of a grave, nothing is what it seems. A few days after searching, Maya finds the perfect site for the tomb. He comes home at sundown, exhausted but thrilled. What's it like, the spot you've picked, I ask. I'll take you, he says to my surprise. Mother insists I wear sandals because of scorpions or snakes. I don't like anything on my feet, but for this it's a small price to pay. Since Kai Kai's dreams, I've been wary of everything with a poison spite. Beyond the city wall, the desert stretches in all directions. We go west, heading towards a palace where rivers' waters used to run. Nowadays it's a dry valley, the side of which are almost sheer rock. I know the spot well. It's only a short walk uh, from Thebes. It's where the people of power and prestige are taken after death to begin their journey to the world beyond. Maya walks with a huge uh, ra raking stride. I keep asking him to slow down. We scissor down a path already worn into the hillside by the men working with Maya. Which way, I asked, when we reach the point where the valley divides. East, my replies. I'm surprised. West face and graves are far more favoured because they catch the setting sun. After the steep climb, the tomb site comes into view. It's a hundred feet up the cliff face, set back from the edge. Ropes and baskets and other signs of work litter the ground below. Already they've made good progress. I can see steps cut from the rock. The view out over the valley is magnificent. I'm proud of my thoughtful brother. 
This is a beautiful place to be at rest. My brother is smiling, though shaking his head as though I've not quite understood. It's only the beginning, he says. If my measurements are correct, then the real beauty will come from the sun. Ooh. Okay.